Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we have our next big haul trip coming up in a few weeks and I want to begin some of our preventative maintenance for our Kodiak travel trailer here. One of the big jobs that I've had planned for this and I'm kind of waiting for the right moment is I wanted to replace all of our wheel hub bearings and seals. So it's, it's a known fact that most all trailers these days come with cheap, inexpensive imported bearings that can lead to uh, premature failures along the highway. We've experienced that ourselves. We had on our last big haul on the left side, we had one of our um, one of the hubs burned up, the bearings burned up. Fortunately, that wasn't a complete disaster for us and we were able to get it fixed and uh, get down the road in a matter of a few hours. But my hopes with this, with this job that I'm gonna do is that we're gonna be replacing all of the bearings in these wheel hubs with high quality Temkin bearings. We'll, we'll be replacing both the cups and the cones and the oil seals as well. And my hopes is that with doing this and investing in high quality bearings, this is gonna add a, um, a really great peace of mind when we're making these trips down the road and I'm not gonna have any future bearing failures. That's my hopes anyway. So of course, you have to know the proper techniques of installing these and getting them mounted on the axles and properly torqued, which is what I'm gonna share with you in this video as well. All right, so we're gonna start with one side. We'll get it jacked up on jack stands, remove both of the, uh, the wheel hubs on one side, and I'll get those bearings replaced, get them back on there, and then we'll move to the other side and get that done too. So we'll go into the shop. That's where all of the new hardware is. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be installing, uh, the tools that we'll be using, and then uh, we'll get jumping on this, uh, this job, okay? Okay, so here's all of our new hardware that's gonna be going on our axles there, all high quality Timken cups and cones. We also have the, uh, the new oil seals. Now these are made by SKF, but a very high quality oil seal there. So these part numbers that you see for our trailer, these are standard sizes for five lug hub assemblies. Please keep that in mind. This is only for five lug hubs, but if you have a five lug trailer or a five lug axle in your trailer, these parts right here are gonna be interchangeable for what you have. If you have a six lug or an eight lug hub assembly, these are not gonna be the correct part numbers. So keep that in mind. All of these right here, all of these parts were purchased at Motion Industries. And so you can go to Motion and get any of the stuff that you need regarding bearings, bearing races, the oil seals, or your local bearing supplier, all right? So we also have a new uh, bearing packer. This is what we're gonna be using to uh, pack all of the bearings with grease properly. I even have a new bearing race and seal driver toolkit, all right? This was purchased on uh, Amazon for around $30, $35, I believe, all right? And this uh, Bearing Race driver kit was also purchased on Amazon for around $18, $19, I believe. And it comes with all the standard sizes there that you can use to uh, install the Bearing Races in the hubs. They are machined out of aluminum, which is important whenever you're installing these bearing races. Never use any hardened steel punches to do that. You want to use a mild steel or a soft metal like this aluminum right here. All right. You can also use this to install the, uh, the oil steel there as well. All right. So that's going to be uh, what we're going to be using to install. We've also got uh, new grease right here. We're going to be going with the Staplex. Um, extreme pressure uh, red grease. This was provided by CRC. They are a channel supporter here and provide uh, grease lubricants and uh, cleaners for all of my uses around the shop. So thank you CRC for providing the grease for this. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our hub removal so we can get going on this job. All right, we got the uh, right side jacked up. Go ahead and get our wheels removed. So notice that we've got both of the axles supported with jack stands there. I believe those were uh, 10 ton rated jack stands. I've had those things for probably 20 years or more. I can't remember what the ratings are, but those were rated for RVs. So always important to support the weight of whatever vehicle you're working on, on jack stands with a solid ground there. So we've got it sitting on this uh, UHMW plastic to support it from going down into the dirt. All right. so. Next step up, we need to go ahead and get both of our both of our hub assemblies removed from the axles now.
We'll come back and clean all this later. Once we're ready to do all our install, I'm just gonna give it an initial wipe and clean up here, just to kind of get some of the grease off. But we'll get everything cleaned up. And uh, the brakes, brakes look like we still have plenty of uh, brake shoe material left on there, so we're not gonna uh, we're not going to be replacing the brakes. We're only doing the uh, the bearings and races and oil seal. We got both of the hubs removed. We'll go ahead and give both of them another little clean down now. I'm just using the uh, CRC heavy duty degreaser for this. You can use their brake clean, works good too. Mainly just wanna get some of this uh, oil and grease residue out of the, out of the axle assembly here. So whenever you remove your, your hubs, you'll need to inspect your bearing journals here, make sure that they're in good shape. If there's any kind of uh, burrs, uh, nicks or anything in there that's uh, causing the bearings not want to go on right, you'll need to get a file or something and, or a stone and just clean those up so that the bearings will slide on right. All of our axles are going to be in good shape with the exception of the uh, left side. That's on the left side is the one that we had the bearings burned up but when we replace those we clean the axle up and it should be okay but all of them should be in a condition that looks like that right there so we still have our oil seal and inner bearing that we need to get out there so we're going to flip it over and uh, we'll use a punch and a hammer and knock those out so i got a this is a brass rod here There's our inner bearing and the old oil seal there. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and wipe most of the grease out of the hub here. So I am using some, some of the heavy duty nitrile gloves. We'll just kind of wipe most of the uh, extra grease out of here. And then we're gonna go to the smart washer to get everything clean and uh, free of grease and oil. So now we got everything cleaned up. The next phase I want to do is uh, remove the uh, inner and outer bearing races there. So we got your, this is your bearing race right here. And then you got your race here and there should be enough room behind it that you can get in there with a punch. I'm going to go ahead and use my brass punch and my hammer to knock those out. 
But there is another technique that's uh, widely used to remove bearing races that I wanted to point out. If <clears throat> it's very common in machine shops like ours that you would have people bring you things like this that have a bearing race stuck in there that's uh, hard to get out. Sometimes you can't get in behind the bearing race in order to punch it out. So if you have a welder, you can come in here either with a stick uh, welder or a MIG welder, whatever you want. Come in here and weld a weld bead around the inside of the race, let it cool, and then they'll usually just fall out. And if they don't fall out, you can usually just tap on them a little bit and they'll, and they'll come right out of there. So I wanted to point that out because that is a widely used technique and I'm, and I'm sure I'm gonna have people that, that wanna suggest that. But, but because I wanna make this a little bit more relatable to people that may not have a welder or may not have the skills to weld that, you can use a, you know, a punch and a hammer to remove these bearing races, all right? I'll start with the bottom there. So there's enough clearance behind the bearing race that you can get the edge of a punch on there and, uh, and hit on it. So let's see if we can go ahead and get it knocked out of there. There we go. There's your inner bearing race right there, all right? So we'll go in there and we'll clean this up again because there's still a little bit of grease in, in there that I didn't get. But, and, there, and I, there should be room there to just set it right on the um, face of the hub and get in there and punch this out. have quite enough room so I'm gonna have to set this up a little bit differently so I can reach in there and, and finish knocking that out all right what we got is this uh, this is a it's an old work piece from years and years ago that's not being used so we'll use it to set the hub on elevate it a bit now we should be able to get in there and finish knocking this race out there we go All right, there is our outer bearing race. All right, we've run into a couple of problems here. Now, I just ordered all these parts the other day and I brought them home with the assumption that all the part numbers were correct. So evidently, we got two part numbers that were wrong. And I'm just now getting in here checking this. But I, when I went down to motion, I brought all of the parts that weren't even used at. These were the spare parts that I had in another bag. I, I took the seal, the bearing races, and the bearings down there. And they sized them up and they were supposed to send me the right stuff, but they did not. So first thing is the oil seal here. This is the one that we knocked out. This is a half inch wide oil seal right there or there and about, yeah. So it's a half inch wide, all right. This is the seal that uh, came and it is only 5 16 wide. Now the diameter on the OD and for the shaft size is right. It's just the thickness is different. Now I don't know if they make this in the proper thickness as this one here. So I need to ask and verify that, but this will work but I wanna make sure that we have the right seal first before I knock these in there. So I'm gonna ask about the, the seals there. But the major player that's causing our disruption right now is actually the, uh, the inner bearing cup right here, this bearing race. So we'll just drop it in there and you can see, all right? See, that's the, you see it fits in the housing. So you're approximately 30, 30 thousandths uh, too small with the calipers. This one's measuring around uh, 2.328. All right, and then the, the one that come out of there, this is the one we knocked out, measures two point, right around 2.360, okay? So apparently it's obvious that's the wrong size. I don't know what happened. You know, they may have clicked on the wrong part number in their computer. I don't really know, but I gotta get this fixed. So 
I'm going to take a ride back down there, uh, show them all the parts, and uh, get the right stuff coming so we can complete this. This is where it gets frustrating because this was what I had planned on doing today is getting this, this side completed. And now since we don't have the right parts, it's going to be at least another day, maybe even two days before I can get back on this, which is really frustrating. Uh, but I am going through here. I've, I've, I've checked the, uh, the bearings, and these are correct. You, got your, you have a 1 and 3 eighths uh, bore on your inner bearing. Your outer bearing should be inch and a sixteenth, so I'm verifying that with our calipers, so that's right on the money right there. So our bearings should be right. But need to go get this taken care of, get our proper parts that we need, and, um, and I'll bring you guys back once we're ready to start installing our, all of our bearing races. All right, well, I just got back from Motion to try to get this sorted out. And they actually had one of the proper bearing races that I need on their shelf uh, once they figured out the, the correct part number. Unfortunately, that's all they had. So they've got an order in for the other three races that I need. They should be here tomorrow. So my plan is to go ahead and go out there to the uh, Kodiak, start getting the other two hubs pulled and start getting them clean. That way I'll have all four of them here ready uh, for, the, for the install of the bearing races. So this is going to be your correct part number for the inner race there, L68111. And uh, this, is the, this is probably the biggest frustration I have is that it was my fault for not checking and verifying all these parts whenever I first brought them back. I assumed that they sold me the right parts, but they did not already got that part of the video filmed so please dis disregard the part number that I showed at the beginning of the video because this is going to be the bearing race right there all right so that is our inner bearing and race assembly right there the other frustrating thing is that the oil seal that I had the uh, SKF they could not find the exact match of this size oil seal right here and it didn't have the spring in there as well so my best option was to go ahead and go by Rob's Hit Center and pick up four more of these oil seals. They keep these in stock. They're just under $4 a piece. And this is what you typically see on just about every trailer out there. Most all of them have these right here. So we're just going to put these back in there and this is what we're going to run. I wanted to have the same type of seal in there because this is what's designed to go in that application. So frustrating there as well. I did pick up new uh, dust caps. As well, these are also about three fifty a piece or so, something like that, at the rubber boot there. So, I'm going to go ahead and go back out to the Kodiak, start getting the other two uh, hubs pulled, and uh, getting those prepped for the new races.